Next guest is some a very familiar face, Brian Benstock from Paragon Honda has been a part of every State of the Union event uh, from the very beginning. Started with like a very ground zero feeling where Brian told us, hey, he, he I got diagnosed with COVID-19, got through it. Uh, meanwhile, kept the organization running. They're starting to come back with a vengeance. They're serving customers all over the state in sales and service. I mean, all over the city in sales and service in some really creative ways. Uh, he's joined by today Peter Lido, who used to be the head of automotive retail for Google and now is the CEO of Foundation Direct. Brian, Peter, thanks for giving us time. We've got the new dynamic duo today, so uh, you look good and it's good to have you here. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us, Paul, and thanks for everything you're doing in the industry to bring us together. Oh man, it is truly, truly my pleasure. So uh, what we're going to do for this session, because we have 20 minutes, um, um, you, you know who these guys are already. And I want really to have Peter kind of set the table from uh, the, the 30,000 foot view. He has eyes on a lot of different things. He has obviously a lot of insight because he worked, uh, worked with Google to help them build what is now the automotive advertising platform. I want to have him set the table for what he's seeing and uh, what he's working on and then really have Brian react and respond to that um, as someone who's actually got his hands in the dirt and is uh, make, building something out of it. So, um, Peter, what, what are you seeing from a consumer demand expectation perspective? You know, like what are successful dealers doing today from your vantage point? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, we used to always say at Google and God we trust and everyone else bring data. So I'm going to be very focused on the data pieces of, <laughs> of the conversation. That. It's fantastic. Uh, there's a couple of things I would say. Um, first, follow the customer. We have to look at what the customer is saying and then more importantly, what they're doing because sometimes those two things aren't the same thing. For example, I want a Ferrari, but I actually can't afford a Ferrari. Those are, those are two different things. <laughs> um, so what are the consumers saying today? Um, what they're saying is they want and think they're going to need to rely on a personal vehicle more and more as time goes on. Uh, that's obviously something that this show has discussed at great lengths before, so I won't belabor on it, but ride sharing, um, you know, taxis, public transportation are a scary thing for a lot of people, and they're saying they want vehicles. They're also saying that if they have the ability to transact online and buy online, uh, that they're willing to do so and even speed up their buying process. Uh, Google did a survey of thousands of customers, and they said 18% of them said, yeah, if I could buy a car online tomorrow, I, I would actually do it mm -hmm. instead of waiting three, three months down the road. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, okay, they're saying the right things, but are they doing the right things? Yep. Um, and we're seeing proof of points of that. I think Dean did a good job of talking from a cars.com perspective earlier on your show about the demand that he's seeing in the marketplace. Uh, to put things in perspective, Google just had a webinar last week. Uh, they asked, is it a good time to start buying a new car? Those types of queries are up 9X uh, March and April compared to the first two months of the year. Wow. Uh, searches for vehicle financing are up 34% month over month. And uh, terms like, how do I buy a car online and deliver these cars online? Can, can a dealer deliver a car to me or up dramatically as well? And so now we have both what the consumer is asking for or saying and what they're actually doing on intent engines like Google. Mm -hmm. um, they're matching each other, which is good news for our dealers. Um, to answer your last part of your question before getting to the main event with, with Brian's uh, 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 viewpoint, um, the question is, well, how does the industry responding and what do dealers do? Um, the good news for dealerships, the, the market is really soft right now. And mm -hmm. what I mean by soft is you have a lot of OEMs who put great incentives out there on vehicles, but they pulled back on their advertising. So I have the regional ad associations, a lot of third parties aren't participating in the auction. Mm -hmm. Dealers can grab these customers very efficiently and effectively. Uh, Brian will probably talk to this a little bit more from what he's seeing on the Paragon side, um, but it's a, it's a time that we haven't seen in a, in a very long time in terms of efficiencies on platforms like Google and Facebook and there's great opportunity to win in those markets. Um, and then I would say to any dealer who's out there today, when you think about what strategies to deploy. Um, Actually, I can, would, I, can I pause you for please, one second right yeah. there? Just I wanna make sure we catch it because um, I know you're trying to move through. Um, so what you're saying is basically a lot of ad dollars have been pulled out of the market by OEMs, by tier two. And so it gives like the marketer and the brand marketer and me perks right up when you say that. Because if there's less noise, that means there's more attention for the third, you know, tier three dealers to go in and get in front of that consumer without the noise of OEM, without the noise of T tier two, and be, be able to, to communicate what you are about. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And as the closest point to sell, it's a great opportunity uh, for, for people like Brian with limited competition to just go in there and, and grab these customers and turn them into sales. Right. And what that translates to <laughs> long term 
what that translates to is market share, right? You got it. And, and that's, I think, the holy grail of what every dealer should be focusing on right now. If they're gonna be less cars sold, I can still sell the same amount or more cars if I use this opportunity to grab a bigger piece of the pie. And what you said right there to me is a direct correlation to that opportunity. Yeah, I appreciate you slowing me down because that, that's, that's right. exactly the point uh, that, that we're seeing. And, uh, you know, we talked to a lot of our former colleagues. We talked to a lot of OEMs, regional associations. I mean, understandably, some of them are, are cutting back budgets. Um, I, I always say marketing is still seen as a cost center, not a profit center. Um, yep. It actually is a profit center if, if done correctly. Um, but we don't see it that way as an industry yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the first things to get cut. Um, ample opportunity as everyone's pulling back. Uh, to be front and center with those customers. All right, I'm gonna ask you one more question and then we're sure. gonna like Brian, like Brian's like Bruce Banner right now, but you can't see off screen. He's actually starting to turn green and he's gonna actually explode out of that thing and just let us know what's up. So, um, you know, what channels are real effective? We, we talked a little earlier on the program about like traditional media outlets, behaviors changing and shifting. So give us your perspective on channels. Yeah, on the channel side, I'm with everybody else. Without live sports or live events, the TV buy doesn't make sense at mm -hmm. all right now. And I would question it in general. Mm -hmm. um, watch time on YouTube is up 39%, if I'm not mistaken, as you know, and you have Bob coming on later, so I won't uh, hit Facebook stats too hard, but 223 million user, users a month, 117 million on, on daily. That's where the eyeballs are. Mm -hmm. um, those can be served as TV-like compliments right now. They always are, even when TV's strong, they're especially good now. Um, to get more of a branding and awareness message out there in the marketplace to build that pipeline for your next month's sales. Um, but beyond that, you know, we're huge proponents of Google and Facebook, of course. Um, their audience data is real time. They reach customers um, anywhere they go across their billions of, of, of uh, user base across platforms. And again, we're seeing the efficiencies there. Uh, the thing we're trying to encourage every dealer to do is, are you advertising again across profit centers? Mm -hmm. Do you have a campaign running for new? used service um what about um uh, vin level creative assets how are you marketing your your dealership the dealers who are looking at all their profit centers and are providing the most information within their ads a la bringing the vdp page directly to the ads are meeting what the customer is asking for today all right great table set brian now is full green his shirt is ripped he's got all his muscles out um brian why don't you let us know is, is peter just full of crap no, I think Peter's got it exactly right. You know, I, I really, uh, I've known Peter for many years and he is um, just one of those people that has, uh, he brings the data all the time and the data's spot on. You know, what he, what he said reminds me of an ad I saw many years ago and it, it showed a bunch of trees with no leaves on it. And it showed one tree with all the leaves on it and it stood out and it, and it, was, and it was an advertising message. When everybody else is pulling back, that's a great time to take advantage of the marketplace. And especially those of us that are in the digital world right we've been forced in new york to be digital only and you can't be digital only in just how you're um selling cars but you've got to be there with your marketing if you're a digital only store and you're buying television ads you're, you're dead you're dead in the water uh I, you know peter said something about uh, without sports you shouldn't be advertising on television then he corrected himself and, and said he questions being there at all and, and so do i i mean i think that if you're spending money and you have no attribution for that spend well, you know, then you have no business spending the company's money that way. There, there's no reason today to waste money on advertising. You have to bring the data. And with digital, you're able to measure it so precisely, right? Every dollar you spend in the market to see the ROI. And let's, let's talk about how digital works from a Google uh, perspective. And perhaps um, Peter's a lot more qualified than I am. But as a consumer of digital marketing, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with how it works. Dealers bid up the AdWords. The more people that are buying the AdWords, the higher the cost. So it's actually possible for a dealer today to reduce his or her expense and have the same reach that they had before. Right now in the marketplace, we cut our advertising budget 50%. We cut it in half, yet the amount of reach that we're getting and the amount of leads that we're getting is matching May of last year. Mm -hmm. So in other words, for half the price, we're reaching the same amount of customers that we did last year. In other words, I've got the same number of leads that I had in May of 2019 without all this COVID stuff going on. So understanding the data and looking at the data from foundation, 
we raised our bar for the expect from our sales teams. And can you imagine this? I'm telling the teams, I expect similar outcomes this month than what we had last year, even though our stores are currently closed. And, and, and wow. to, to say that they're performing would be an understatement. Uh, the, the Paragon Honda store and the Paragon Acura store this month will combine deliver over 700 uh, new and pre-owned cars without us being open. And, and it's really that digital first mindset using the data. I, I think, you know, uh, again, I go back to what Peter said, uh, in God we trust, everybody else bring data. I mean, I, that's the first time I've heard that, Peter. Me too. And I wrote it down. It's a keeper. It's well, a I'd keeper. love to coin that phrase. It was actually Eric Schmidt, former CEO and, and former chairman of Google. So I, I have to source it appropriately, but I, I'll take the credit. <laughs> you brought it to the party. And, and, I, and I think, you know, uh, and, and uh, David Spisak said it when we were on last time, uh, wasting money on advertising is optional. And I, I, we just choose not to waste uh, money on advertising. The, the YouTube... Uh, the increase in YouTube is through the roof. Mm -hmm. Eyeballs are on that all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you don't have a, a profit, each of your profit centers represented there, you're missing out on it. And I challenge dealers on the fixed op side, you know, to Google oil change near me and to see exactly what comes up. And we found time after time, no dealers are in this space. Now, fixed ops is such an incredibly important profit center for us, but we don't even have our hat in the ring. And, and I think, you know, when we started realizing these blind spots, it was really easy for us to start making some uh, progress there. And, uh, you know, we're using uh, the expertise of people like Peter uh, and his team to help us identify the areas that we're missing out on. And when we go in, a, in the New York metro area, uh, oil change near me, Paragon wasn't there, but neither were any of the other dealers. Is it any wonder we're losing 80% of our market share to independents. Can you imagine in the five boroughs of New York, there are 17,000 independent service operators. And we think that we can get away with not having AdWords there representing us. You know who was there? Jiffy Lou, Pep Boys. And, I just, and I just did it in Syracuse. I, I scroll, kept scrolling. I didn't see, I saw Midas, Jiffy Lou, Mavis, all that stuff. That support Brian's point too, Paul. I mean, when I left Google in February, uh, less than 25% of dealers were actively advertising service campaigns on Google ads. And when you get into used car, less than 10% were. And yeah, you know, uh, those are the profit margins, right? Uh, as, as you both know better than I do. Um, we heard on the service side, oh, our bays are full and maybe we can't take on more. But yep. then you, you reach someone like Brian who says, oh, no problem, I'll figure out a, a model for that. And right. so... Uh, I would just encourage dealers to look about how they're advertising cross profit center. You know, and Peter, you, you said that, you know, the, one of the solutions for us was opening up the shop 24 hours. And, you know, if, if we're going to play Paul and Peter, if we're going to play in the digital sandbox, then you've got to be all in. Mm -hmm. And and who's in the digital sandbox? Amazon, Apple, Google. And what are their hours? Their hours are 24 hours a day. I, I'm sorry, man. I don't want to be open 24 hours a day, but there are plenty of people drinking coffee and online shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you want to be in that game, you've got to be where the customers are. This has got to be for us customer driven, not, not dealership driven. I think that's I even think more important in larger metro areas. Right. Like, yeah, there are some rural areas where it, it makes it more prohibitive, but where people are up. You're telling the story last time about how, you know, people are requesting trades. Actually, even Syracuse I was talking to a dealer. People are sending, you know, like, hey, will you buy my car at like 1145 p.m.? And when you respond to that customer at 1145 and uh, and 20 seconds yep. later with a, with a, a, a text message, uh, or an email response, the customer's mind is blown. Yep. And, and, and you, you're, you're communicating with them. And if they don't want to communicate with you, they'll tell you. And I'm not saying call them at midnight. Mm -hmm. But um, we are beta testing some pretty uh, exciting stuff, overnight transactions. Uh, we are selling cars overnight while, every, while, while we're sleeping and coming into uh, completed orders in the morning that we're delivering. This is, this is really an exciting time for us. And I, I, if I seem a little bit animated today and excited, I see, I'm starting to see the first sprouts of growth, uh, the first sprouts that I've seen in a while in this COVID pandemic in New York. And I'm getting excited about the performance of our teams. Our teams are really stepping up. They're getting into this stride. We're having 20 car days on the Honda store, 25 car days and, and 10 car, 12 car days in the Acura side. And, and I've changed 
uh, my approach from survival now to to growth. I think oh, there's an incredible no wonder you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, we're, we're we're we don't have that profit part figured out, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. You know, I I think the the market is expansive, and as people as people in the marketplace are contracting, mm -hmm. we think that's a really good opportunity to be expanding and, and taking some territory. Uh, that, that others are giving up. You know, Peter spoke about AdWords and the OEMs pulling back. They've increased the incentive spend or pulled back on the advertising. Yep. Well, how the heck can you let people know about that? <laughs> and you're on the tier three side, but there's good news in that, Peter, is that for the first time, it's 2012 again. I can buy Honda tier one yes, AdWords. Yes, you can be the one that lets them know. And, and so, you know, I feel like in that movie, Trading Places, give me the order, give me the order, let's go, I'll take right here. Uh, you know, it, it's there. And the lead counts, like I said, the lead counts. We, we, we have no business being in the position that we're in right now in New York. Our Acura store is in second or third place in the nation for new cars and second or third place for used cars. A Honda store is number one in the nation uh, for used car sales. Uh, and, and we have no business being there uh, because of the uh, lockdown in New York. But we are there. But you and are. I think, it's, I think it's because of our digital first strategy. And I think that's what's driving it. Well, gentlemen, I could talk about this all day. I think we're all siphoning from your energy, Brian, and we're going to use that energy to move us throughout the day. Uh, thanks for joining us again. It's always a shot of, net of energy in the arm. Peter, also, thank you for joining us. Gentlemen, I will talk to you both very, very soon. Take care. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye-bye.